Welcome to another tutorial on the Armstrong YouTube channel. I'm Thomas Lee and today let's take a closer look at the throwing blade on a DLG and at the end of the video we'll go through a strong reliable installation together. First things first, what is a throwing blade? On a DLG we throw the model into the air by spinning around like a fool. We throw the model into the air like throwing a discus, hence the name discus launch glider. To hold on to the model for launch, we install a throwing blade onto the wingtip. So if you're a right-handed thrower like me, then your throwing blade will be on the left wingtip. Vice versa, if you're a left-handed thrower, then your throwing blade will be on the right wingtip. Remember, if you find this video useful, please give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe. Thanks. Okay, so there are two types of throwing blades, either a classic throwing blade like this that gets installed through the wingtip or a T-blade that is inserted through the edge of the wingtip itself. A classic throwing blade is easier to install and our Armsor 3D throwing blade is super comfortable to hold because of the shape and profile of the blade. But if you throw with an uneven force between the top and bottom finger, it's easier to break the joint between the blade and the wingtip. A T-blade on the other hand has a tang molded to the blade which is inserted through the wingtip for a very sturdy connection between the wingtip and blade, but is usually a much flatter profile because of the way they're made. Also, T-blades run the risk of delamination due to the way forces are applied. So to remedy that, pilots either wrap Kevlar around the blade to prevent it from splitting, or manufacturers increase the thickness of the part. But if it's too thick, then it might not fit into many of the current super thin wingtips. Both styles are great. It really comes down to personal preference. That said, many planes, such as our models the Deviant and Banff 2, are designed for the classic blades, so we have a big hardpoint inside the wingtip, which makes it very difficult for you to try and install a T-blade in. If you're installing a T-blade, check out our T-blade installation tutorial right here. Okay, I just mentioned a hardpoint. What is that? On an RC glider, the hardpoint refers to a hardened and reinforced area, which is filled by a mixture of typically epoxy and microballoons. Microballoons are microscopic glass spheres which helps lighten and thicken the mixture. On a DLG wing, there are hard points for the wing bolts to pass through, and most of today's gliders will have a hard point in the wing tip created in a factory for installing the classic style blade. The manufacturer will tell you where to cut through the wing to install the blade. For the Deviant and Banff 2, you can download our throwing blade location templates on our website. I'll link them in the description box below. Just print them out and make sure you're printing it to a one-to-one -one scale. Don't shrink to fit page or anything like that. Cut it out and align it on your wingtip to mark the location. Once the location is marked, I use a Dremel tool with a diamond burr bit. I'll link both of these below as well. They're super useful. And grind out the hole. Make sure you don't go overboard grinding that hole. Start small and then use a small round file to slowly enlarge it to make sure it fits your blade as perfectly as you can. You want the blade to be able to transfer those loads directly to the carbon reinforcement and hard point built into the wing. I see a lot of installs where the hole is made too big and then the builder attempts to just fill it with epoxy or CA and it causes issues down the road. You simply cannot rely on adhesives alone to pass the loads. I rough up the surface of the blade where it passes through the wing and clean it with rubbing alcohol. Insert the blade. I keep the blade perpendicular to the wing. I put a few drops of super thin CA using a needle tip and hit it with kicker. I do this a few times until the CA doesn't wake into the joint anymore, which means it's glued nice and tight. Next, I roughen up the area around the joint and clean up with rubbing alcohol again. This preps the area for the fillet, which helps spread the load from the blade to the wingtip in case you do an uneven launch or something. I use a nice 30 minute epoxy. Don't use five or 10 minute epoxy. They come out quite a bit softer than 30 minute epoxy. Mix the epoxy thoroughly and mix it some more. Some people use micro balloons to thicken and lighten the mixture, just like a hard point, but I like to use finely cut carbon toe instead as it gives a lot of structure and strength to the hard point. I don't mind the extra fraction of a gram for increased reliability. I just scoop a bit of the mixture with the bent wire I used to mix the epoxy and apply it along the joint. 
Once I'm done, just let it sit and cure. That's it. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial and learned something along the way. Hit subscribe so you don't miss our next videos. See you next time.